Ciao, jewelry making friends. My name is Joey Balistrieri. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here and welcome back to our regular people in our sweet little community here. So today I'm going to do a rather quick project, a really fun project, really unique and a fabulous conversation piece. I'm going to make one of these hand chains and I have done a video on hand chains a few months back and I can link that below. I did I think four or five different designs in that video I don't remember but I um, just love these they're very easy to put on you can wear the chain part on your index finger or your middle finger you can still put your rings right on top you can stack other bracelets with these it's really fun and just really great if you're going out to dinner or you know if you're going to have a coffee with someone it just becomes a great conversation piece so I don't have a silver one and I want to make one and what's a little different about this one is that I'm kind of upcycling I've already cut it apart but I had made a bracelet maybe 15 years ago that was sterling silver and it was these little chain links that are so pretty everything is soldered the little links in between the larger oval links everything is soldered so I did have to make some cuts in order to make this work as a hand chain and then this little piece of sterling silver chain came from puritybeads.com it's one of my favorite websites for buying chain i found the gentleman at a bead show and so i have it it's shipped very you know very nicely on a little piece of cardboard and um i think i think they come in three foot lengths i, I haven't ordered in a little bit but anyway um i can you know give you guys that website if you're looking for really nice chain he has a, all he has sterling silver chain a huge selection and he has um, chain like this one that is on my um, little extender that has an electroplated like they call it an e-coating but it's anti-tarnish and I just really love that so I did this one with some micro faceted garnets and some little gold filled spacer beads that have that stardust finish on it and on this one I'm going to use this little check glass flower for my um, dangle on the end of my extender and I have upcycled cut apart my little sterling silver larger link because these little oval links here will be perfect as an extender chain because that way these are fully adjustable for any size when you have the little extender chain you can hook your clasp into any length you want and depending on how you want this to land on your hand so let me take this one off because i've made quite a few of these but this was my favorite one as far as the length of the extender and you know just the entire look and i just want to recreate this in silver and so i'm going to make these cuts and i'll give you the exact measurements in case you want to duplicate that so i had already played around with the length of the part that goes around my wrist and the reason that I did that is because this chain that I have purchased in sterling silver is so very fine and I knew it was going to be challenging to get jump rings or anything through these very tiny links so before I started making this I did want to play around and as you can see like this needs to be polished because I am literally upcycling a very old little sterling silver bracelet that I made many many years ago and was not wearing anymore so let's start by getting this little loop part that goes around the finger and I you know sometimes I pull things close to me so that I can see and then I realize you can't see so let's remedy that and um, also I have cut a few of these little crystals and I'll just show you on the strand what they look like they coordinate just beautifully with my little check glass flower and um, I just love it I even thought about putting the flower on on the back part of the hand chain but because this chain is so fine let me zoom you in a little bit can you see 
like the scale of this just isn't working for me. So I decided to make this a dangle. I have a ball head pin and that's what I'm going to do with that. And micro faceted gems, anything really tiny works beautifully for these hand chains. You can see this one is even smaller and anything that's flat. So if you had, if you were working with a little bit larger chain, any bead that's flat that will sit on the back of the hand works really well. So zoom us back out again so it's more comfortable viewing. And so I am going to start by just using this little hand chain that I made as my measurement for my ring. And so let me just get this little loop I have an extra piece of wire on the side of my table and I'm just going to like kind of line it up so that I don't waste my chains so that I know exactly where to cut so right about there should be perfect and I'm just going to give that a little cut this fine chain is really easy to cut and so this is the part that will go around my finger. And I am also going to need some really fine wire, not so much for the crystals. Like on this one, I had to use, I think, 24 gauge wire to go through those micro faceted garnets. But as you can see, I did a really, really tiny, tight little wire wrapped loop on both ends and connected that to the chain and it just stabilized this little bar that rests on the back of my hand and I wear this all the time it's for being so dainty and petite it's surprisingly durable so let me just get some silver wire out of my little work basket so I'm going to use this, um, I keep all of my wires in little plastic bags with the packaging cut so that I know what's in there and then if I make jump rings or if I have anything left over when I'm doing a project, I know exactly what it is. I put it back in the bag. So this is the Beadalon silver plated 24 gauge round medium tempered wire and I'm just going to pull out a scrap because I throw my scraps in there and just warm it and that is going to be the beginning because I need to I'm going to try not to use jump rings just because of how petite this little silver chain is so I'm going to start off with a wire wrapped loop just putting a 90 degree bend in my pliers. Let me get this nice and straight. And I am going to switch to my small Zuron round nose pliers. See how small the tip is? I like my other ones too, but th these are re have a really small tip. And I want this to be really small because there again, I'm keeping in mind the size of my very dainty <laughs> chain. And so I just have my little loop started. I'm going to center it. You can do a more messy wrap with these for sure. It is, um, well, I'm making it into kind of a boho style of jewelry, but you don't have to do that. You can do them really, really neat. But And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and attach both bits of my chain before I put my beads on. So this is really petite. So I try to show you. Just putting them both on the wire and I'm just going to feed it down to that loop, get it in the loop. And now the part that goes around my finger, the ring part of this will be nice and secure when I close this loop. So that will be the next little step, this very tiny wire. And so if any of you know anything about the history of jewelry or enjoy that kind of a thing, um, you can see if you ever watch any of the movies with flapper girls or any 
of the things that take place in the 1920s, it is, this was a very common type of jewelry. They were generally not petite like this. They generally did pearls and sort of the look of diamonds, if not real diamonds. And they were quite elaborate. Sometimes the part that went around your wrist would be double and triple. And, you know, so, um, you know, that might be fun if it's something you're interested in. But this, this is definitely not a new design. It's been around. And this is just a quite modern version of it. But you can totally make this like for evening wear and really add a lot of bling. So I will tidy up that loop just a little bit after I get some beads on here and I have something to hold on to. The other thing I have out here is some sterling, not sterling, some glass, silver glass beads. I'll show you what they are. These are Toho, the, the Japanese beads, and they're just glass seed beads. And these are a size 11-0, I believe. Yes, 11-0. And so I'm going to use that because they're quite small. And I wanted the look of metal, but I didn't want to have to deal with tarnish. So I'm just going to create a little pattern, um, like maybe three. Let's try three of these little crystals. These crystals, even though they are glass, they sort of had the look of labradorite to me. So I thought they were really pretty. Maybe I want four. Try four crystals. I'm going to use one of these little silver glass beads. Oh, look how pretty that is. And then maybe try three for my my center, another little seed bead, and then go back to the four. One, two, three, four. Oh, that is so pretty. And as I said, I this one that with the garnets, I wear it all the time and it's really comfortable. So I'm kind of going off my measurements for that one. So this part that would be on the back of my hand, even though it's not connected, I can actually try it on at this point just to see. It would it is my little bar is shorter, but the crystals are a little bit bigger. Um, but I still think I want it a little bit longer. So let me back my pattern off. Let's see. Oh, that's pretty and it's and it's a little bit longer Let's compare it to my my prototype my little sample yes I think that is perfection and so now I'm going to do the same thing on this end I'm going to start my wire wrapped loop without closing it because before I close it I want to add in my section of chain that's going to go around my wrist and I'm going to stay in the same place on these small pliers because I want it to be consistent and you know want this end to match the other end and just center that loop on the wire you can see and I'm going to just open it a tiny bit to give myself some space to slide my chain on there and now I have already let me lay this one down I already have this little scrap of wire about in the middle on this chain and this part it doesn't matter if it's exactly in the middle because it's the bracelet part that goes around your wrist and one side is going to have the extender chain like you see here so it doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle but you know somewhere <laughs> there in <laughs> So I can even leave it on this little scrap of wire and switch it over to the wire that I'm wrapping like that. And just let that go down into the loop. And now we can wrap it closed, just the way we did the other side. I love making these hand chains. They come together so quickly and it's, basic skills in jewelry so if you can wire wrap a loop if you have cutters for your chain you know you can very easily make 
these and they come together really quickly and I also find that they make great gifts and they're great for craft shows because one size fits all because you have an extender chain on the part that goes around your wrist and the part that loops around your finger you know is it, it's a nice large loop so it's really easy for them to fit anyone and then people can stack whatever jewelry they want with them or wear them alone I just think they're really clever, really cute, a little bit modern, great conversation piece, and, and just fun to make because it's they come together so quickly. So I'm just going to get my pliers and make sure that those two loops are nice and straight and straighten that little bar that's going to sit on the back of my hand. And you know now I can pause and try it on. I'll show you when I get the clasp on. They're also very easy to put on yourself. So that one's going to look like that. And now we are just going to add on the extender part and make a little dangle. So let me do my dangle first because I probably can add, I didn't play around with this before I started filming, but probably can add a little crystal to the top and bottom. I don't want it to be too long. I might even want to add one of these silver beads. I don't want my my little dangle on my extender to be too long. Um, but yeah, I kind of like that. And I also want to do the same thing on this where I begin my my loop and don't close it until it is attached to the bottom of the chain because I want as few jump rings <laughs> as possible. So I have my little loop in there and I can add this to the bottom of my little piece of extender chain. And you know what? Uh, I will pause and give you guys the exact measurements as well. I will do that right now. I tend to measure with my heart, and since I had already made quite a few of these, I um, am just going off of my measurements that I came up with the last time I sat down and made these. But I will tell you what they are. So this is just a normal loop. Just trim away the excess and tuck in any sharp ends from Cutting the wire. See it right there. And you know, I'm making these um, quite small and on quite a small scale, but you can definitely use larger beads and larger chain if this is too tedious for you or if this is just much too petite for you. But I kind of wanted to do this in a minimalist way. <laughs> so let me tell you what my extender is. So my extender is about about an inch and an eighth and you can definitely make it longer if you want to. I have done really long ones where that extender was kind of a chain hanging from my wrist and it's really pretty and dramatic but I scaled this one down a little bit and then um, the part that goes around my finger is about four inches long and you know that seems to be the sweet spot for me so it's a good jumping off point <laughs> and then the bracelet part is about three and a half inches on each side so if you're going to try to make these and you want to go off my measurements that is a good good starting place I've had good success with them fitting and, and being comfortable with that. So this is a simple connection and I'm going to use the little sterling silver lobster claw that I rescued <laughs> from that bracelet and this is the little jump ring that it connects to. So that can simply go if it will. So this was my issue is this chain is so fine and so I need to see if this will fit through the chain or if I need to add a little a little jump ring. So when I was cutting my chain apart, I actually used the sterling silver little sections of my original bracelet 
and cut them to make little small fine gauge jump rings and it looks like it this chain is so so fine it looks like I do need one of those tiny little jump rings that I made so as I said I know for some of you this is much too tedious I don't mind it at all but if you would if you want to make these and you like the way they look you can totally do that with larger chain for putting it on and when I get it connected I'll show you how very easy it is to put these hand chains on they're easier than a regular bracelet and now we just add our little extender chain to the bottom so another one of my little sterling silver jump rings that I made so if you can see on the extender it had these small the design of the chain had these small little links in between the oval links and that is what I upcycled to get my jump rings and, and get what I needed for this really fine sterling silver chain. Gold is my favorite and it's what I wear the most of but I do wear silver and I do have silver and so um, I wanted a silver hand chain because <laughs> I've I've made I did a video where I did like five designs and some were a little bit larger and a little bit more statement pieces and then um, I made a couple you know off camera that I wear and so I looked at all the things I'd made and said oh I don't have a silver one so here we go I'm about to have a silver one <laughs> That feels really good. And now just attach my little lobster claw. Oh, I had already put a jump ring. When I was playing with this, let's see. When I was playing with this, I put this little silver jump ring on here. And as soon as I finish filming and show you how cute this is I am going to get a polishing cloth because like I said this bracelet was quite old and it needs a little <laughs> polish but just that quickly this sweet little hand chain is done and so to put them on you go ahead and loop the ring part around whichever finger you want it on I, I always do my middle finger and then the easiest thing to do is to lay your part that has your pretty dangle across your wrist and then you can bring this part around and clasp it wherever you want on the on the chain and so they're really they're much easier to put on even than a regular bracelet of course the camera's rolling as I say that and so it won't be today but <laughs> there but look how fun these are it's just so beautiful and it's just they're just so much fun I love making these I love wearing these I love stacking them with other bracelets and they are so comfortable I find them unbelievably cr comfortable and they just to make me happy I love the little dangle I love everything about it so I will link my other video below on how to do these hand chains. There are some other designs and other ideas for the beads for the back of the hand. And um, if you, know, you haven't seen that, I'll link it below, go and watch it. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, it would be so lovely if you would do that. It doesn't cost you anything or obligate you to anything and it really helps support my work. And we have such a sweet community here. I mean, we really do so much support no trolls no negativity it's just been a really joyful thing to watch this little creative community grow so i will put some pictures up at the end of the video and clean up my mat and i will see you all in the next video ciao jewelry making friends <laughs>